Hi, and welcome back to my shed and part four of my South Bend 13 lathe project. My name is Paul Hopewell and I make all sorts of stuff using whatever I can lay my hands on. In this video I'm going to show you how I started the process of repairing the slideways. To start with most of the video has been omitted or sped up to try and prevent boredom setting in. Just a quick recap. In part 3 you saw how I mapped out the main bed. In the process I discovered that the front underside face and both recesses proved to be as flat as they could be according to my straight edge. But I had to do some work on the front face to remove a 0.05mm that's tooth thou central bulge. To do this I'll need to use my homemade straight edge. But this will prove difficult if I can't get a constant result with regard to squareness. For this I have a number of swan necked brackets that I rescued from an, a number of old chairs. Before you start thinking the poor old chap snapped his can, I need to remind you I've got to support the straight edge in the same position every time I take a measurement. And these bits of old chair bracketry will, when bolted to the front underside, provide enough support for the straight edge. I used three in total, holding them in place with countersunk screws through the gear rack mounting holes. I tested one on its own to see how it coped with the straight edge's entire weight. The front face is wider than the straight edge and these swan necked brackets will hold the straight edge near to the top edge of the front face. What I also need is the front face to be as square as possible to the tops of the V-slides. Using a small engineer's spirit level over the two closest V-slides, I then matched the three brackets by bending them to suit. Here's the rub, no pun intended. Using these supports like this will leave the lower edge of this entire face unconfirmed and from what I can see this face does nothing more than get oily. But all I want is a linear track along its entire length to confirm any of my measurements. Now it's time to get underway but I can already hear mumblings like Getting a straight track along that face is one thing, but what are you going to relate it to? As it happened during my mapping video, I discovered that the two recessed faces were parallel to each other and parallel to the front face. That is apart from a tooth owl bump in the middle. And that I'm about to correct. Quite how or why this tooth owl bump is there is, is a complete mystery to me. But as I've mentioned before, that face doesn't seem to do anything anyway. It's my plan to remove the bump by scraping without touching the areas that are parallel to the recesses. This bit of video has been edited. Almost a week's worth of elbow grease has been cut out or compressed into a few seconds. Let's be perfectly clear about what I'm doing here. This 82 year old lathe is worn and as I've said in the past I can't afford to get the main bedways professionally reground. But with a little bit of work I'm sure I can improve them enough to give this machine a few more years life before it's thrown into a furnace to make garden ornaments. Just under a thou left to come off at this point. Just a few more squirts of elbow grease and then it'll be finished. It's quite good now. The DTI needle is bouncing about a bit, but the readings are now constant enough throughout the entire length. So that's another face complete. The faces on top of all three V slides in the area close to the jaws are all suffering with the usual reminders that the chuck or work pieces have contacted them, in some places quite hard. More so on the nearest slide than the furthest one. Using the straight edge I managed to confirm that all the top faces are straight 
apart from around the damaged areas that is. I'm using this rule to show you the method I use with the straight edge to confirm that the top faces are indeed in line with each other, but only over the area that has been confirmed as straight. Although I've recorded all the measurements during the mapping process, I still find myself double checking, just to be absolutely sure. The readings are still 26.15, that's about 1 inch and 30 thou. The measurements are taken from the tops of each of the outside V slides over the areas that are not worn. In order to get all three faces cleaned up, I'll have to remove material off all of them to a level just below the lowest one, and that is 26.03 millimetres. And to clean that up, I'll need to take them all down to 26 millimetres. Another quick check I did was to use my small surface plate over the top surfaces this confirmed what I already knew after using the straight edge. It also confirmed the start of each worn patch, here marked by the red marker. This is a rough sketch of the bedway's profile, here showing you the top faces. And this is where the measurements were taken from. I've now got to figure out how to remove material from all three top faces while keeping them parallel, level and free from twist. I knew this would make your neck hairs quiver. Mine still twitch whenever I watch it. Nevertheless, there is madness in my method. Initially, my plan was to use a roughing file to remove about 0.1 of a millimetre, that's roughly 4 thou, all the way along the tops. By knocking a bit off the top, a little bit at a time. I plan to use the micrometer to confirm the removal rate down to size plus about a thou. I had to change my tack pretty quickly when I found out that I'd got a bit too close for comfort. My method was to file a bit off the top face and then check it. Reaching the required size I marked that area with a red marker and moved on to the next bit. This process was taking forever. It was then I hit on the idea of using a spacer under the file. The spacer, which was a knot that was ground to size, was placed under the file and the file was drawn back and forward until the cut stopped. In this case, 0.05 millimetres or two thou above the required size. It worked. However, I had to make sure that the other end of the file didn't damage the tops of the V-slides. For this, I initially used a bit of tissue paper on top of a plastic bag. But after the bag flipped out a few times, I ended up with just a bit of folded tissue. The tissue held the file as flat as it could possibly be, but not without an error. What is more, when I pre-finished with a finer file using the same method, I could use one layer of tissue folded only once. Before this process was started, all three top faces were the same level. But when this first slide is straightened, you will see that it will be tipped very slightly. I will show you how I dealt with this later. However, after using the fine file, the rough high spots disappeared, leaving me with about a thou to remove off the top for the finished size. And as there were still some file marks to remove, the last 0.025mm, one thou, should be quite easy to remove. Using the straight edge, this top face appears to be in pretty good shape, except for a bit of fine polishing. The finish in this case was completed using the same method as before except that the file was swapped for a suitable medium grade whetstone. 
Using the whetstone this way was very efficient at removing the very small imperfections on the top face. Also, using a straight edge on something much longer has a drawback. In this case, and on this lathe bed, I started in the centre removing whatever material needed to be removed, whilst maintaining a level reading using the DTI on parallels as my datum guide. However, this causes the centre of the workpiece, in this case the face atop the V-way, to become lower than the ends. To counteract this, I concentrate on one side, first by removing the high spot at the end until the marking blue from the straight edge becomes even across the top, through the centre. After double checking using the DTI once more, and when I'm happy with that, I'll do the same to the other end. I'll just very quickly skip through this repetitive bit. It's probably of no real interest to you, but to get this one top face done took me five days, start to finish. This top face is now straight once more. Now it's time to get the other two faces to the same height as the newly finished face. And to do this I use the same method as I used on the first top face. The only difference is that I roughed out both of the remaining top faces at the same time. Using the spacer as before to prevent the roughing file from taking too much off the tops. After roughing down the two remaining top faces with the rough and fine files, I concentrated on finishing the central top face using the whetstone and confirming progress with the straight edge and the DTI on a sled. Once again, I've removed quite a bit of video to save some time. At this point in time, two of the three top faces are finished, leaving the last top face proud of the other two, as you will see here. Traces of blue are evident on the first and last top faces, indicating that the far top face is high. After the first white with a straight edge, the top face is fairly straight, but with a rough surface. My task now is to get this face straight, level and at the same height as the other two faces. Using the straight edge and the DTI on a sled, also using another smaller straight edge that I made from some 50 by 25 mm bright steel bar. I clean that up on my surface grinder. Remember earlier I showed you the effect of using the file and whetstone from the nearby unmachined top face. Well, this is potentially an exaggerated view of what will happen. Then, as I hand filed and stoned the two remaining faces, the potential effect would be as you can see here. I didn't video record the work I did here, but after I'd ground a further 0.025mm off the spacer, I used it and the whetstone to polish the top off the centre face. The same was done to the face on the top of the front V-slide. When the back face was being polished, it didn't need a lot of work to get it level with the other two. Anyhow, back to the task in hand. The polishing process is getting closer to being finished. Any mistake now will cause me to have to lower the whole lot just to remove the error. So, I really am being as careful as I can. 
After confirming that the last top face is straight according to the straight edge and the DTI sled combination, my final check was to confirm that all three top faces were coplanar. And for that I used my shorter 25 by 50 mm straight edge. All the top faces and the front face are now complete, leaving me with eight true faces in total. These faces are going to assist me in achieving my ultimate goal of resetting the saddle slides and possibly the very little bit of wear that's in the tailstock slide. By way of a teaser, I'm going to use an unusual technique to try and reset these slides. It's experimental and it's not for the faint-hearted. I've never seen it done and probably with good reason. We'll see. That's all for now. Thanks for watching. Bye.